The Gospel of John chapter 21, verses 1, 15 to 19. Let's read for us together. Read. So please stand up and uh, read the words of God. Let's read. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you not love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Jesus said. Take care of my sheep. The third time I have said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He was a because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went out where you wanted. When you are old, you will stretch out your hands. And someone else will trust you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus says, to take the kind of death by which you will glorify God and the sense of you. Follow me. Amen. You see it? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Jesus once asked his disciples, who the people say I am? They replied, saying, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then what about you? Peter said, You are the Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus was glad to hear his answer and said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I will tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter was enlightened by the help of the Holy Spirit to understand who Jesus is, and made a foundational confession for Christianity. Jesus Christ is Son of God, Amen. and the, the living, the Son of the living God, and Christ, the Messiah. Our Lord Jesus is Son of the living God, <laughs> and He is our Savior, anointed King, Messiah. That is foundational confession which was made by Peter. And upon that foundation, our faith has been built. Right? This foundation never be shaken. Oh, that's right. It's uh, lasting forever. Mm-hmm. And, I would, and Jesus said that upon this rock, he would build his church, unshakable by the evil. What it means is that he would build his church made up all the believers who would make the same confession as Peter's. And through them, he would establish his kingdom, the kingdom of life, the kingdom of light, which will never be shaken by the kingdom of death and darkness. Thus, I want to say that all true Christians are spiritual peers who share his confession and commit themselves to participating in his works. So the conversation between Jesus and Peter in today's passage is true of us. We are not reading Jesus' question to Peter made to some thousand years ago. We are hearing the Lord's question to you as a spiritual Peter. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? It's not just the the question Jesus made to this one particular person, Peter, 2,000 years ago. This is still the question that our Lord Jesus is asking you 
as a spiritual Peter, who are sharing the same confession as Peter did, Lord Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God. And he is asking you, Spiritual Peter, do you love me more than these? These may refer to things that would satisfy our needs for living. Jesus asked the question after the miraculous catch of a large fish. Such a great number of fish caught by the help of Jesus indeed satisfied Peter. Otherwise, he would have had to go home with nothing. And he also had a good breakfast prepared by the Lord so that he could satisfy his hunger while enjoying the satisfaction of his need. Jesus asked the question, Do you love me more than these? So, it is possible that these refer to things that can meet our needs. These may also refer to other disciples. Jesus might have wanted to know if Peter loved him more than other disciples did. Peter is always depicted as a man more passionate in action and words toward Jesus compared to other disciples as shown in Matthew 26 verse 33. Even if all fall away on account of you, I will never. So whatever the these refer to, Jesus asked the question to confirm whether Peter's love for him was prior to anything. Do you love me more than this? What is your response? So today I will bless you that your response resonates with Peter's answer. I love you, Lord. As Peter answered, saying, I love you, Lord, three times, because the Lord asked him three times. The Lord Jesus commissioned him to feed his lambs, to take care of his sheep, and to feed his sheep. So what Jesus is telling us is that a true love for him is not a mere experience of an affectionate feeling toward him, but an action of doing something to please him. The best thing we can do to please him is to feed his lambs and to take care of his sheep. As a matter of fact, that was what characterized Jesus' ministry. Was not his ministry about feeding his lambs and caring for his sheep as his people? That's what Jesus said when he came to this world to find that the lost sheep belonged to him. As the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Messiah, was about to ascend into heaven, he was commissioning Peter to carry on his ministry until he comes again. So the Lord's ministry is still going on through all the things as a spiritual Peter like you and me. I would like to reflect on the Lord's ministry that we, the lovers of Jesus, should carry out. First point of my reflection is that our love for Jesus should be Reflected in carrying on the feeding ministry. There's something missing. Reflected. Our love, let me say it again. Our love for Jesus should be evident or reflected in carrying on the feeding ministry of Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that true? Amen. Peter was ordered to feed the lambs belonging to Jesus at the first asking if he loved him. Do you love me? Then feed my lamb. And at the third asking, Jesus commanded him to feed the sheep. Three times he asked, Do you love me more than this? And Peter said, Yes, I love you. The third time. And Jesus said, Then you take care, you feed my sheep. Jesus wanted Peter to feed both his lambs and sheep. A lamb is a young sheep at the growing stage. And a sheep is is referred to as the full fledged. Feeding the lamb and the sheep are simply meant to feed all ages in the believing community. The feeding ministry for the lamb and the sheep is referring to a teaching ministry with a right doctrinal truth and his gospel. For instance, at the Livingstone Fellowship, I am accountable to the Lord for feeding you with a right spiritual food and nutrition. 
which are right doctrinal truths of Jesus and gospel. Amen. So are you in such a way that you should be nurtured by feeding on right food, Amen. whereby you grow up in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ to the extent that you can feed others. Amen. So Jesus is saying to you, if you really love me, do feed yourself as the lamb and sheep of Jesus and grow so that you can feed others. We all believers are engaged in the high calling to the feeding ministry. Amen? Amen. The second point that I want to share with you about the reflection on the Jesus ministry that we should carry on is that we should not be discouraged to stop the caring ministry. Amen. Feeding ministry is one thing and caring is another. While feeding is our teaching, caring is of meeting the needs of brothers and sisters in Christ. Caring for the needy one in our believing community is the way to treat Jesus right. It is because Jesus always identified himself with the needy and the poor one. That he said in Matthew 25, 40, the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Now I should say, it is worth noting that when Jesus, using the ancient Greek word, the agape, for love, asked Peter twice, if he loved him with the agape love, twice Peter, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? When he asked if he loved the love, Jesus for the love, Jesus used agape. <coughs> agape love is a divine love. The best love that human being is capable of is filial love. So at the third day asking, Jesus used the word filial. So when Jesus asked, do you love me? He used the word agape. Do you love me at the agape level? But Peter said, no, I love you. Philip, the human level. Third times, constantly he answered, he responded with the word Philip. So Jesus finally asked him the third time, do you love me? I will follow me. So at the third day asking, Jesus used the word Philip. What this implies is that the Lord wants you to love him with the best love you as a human being is capable of. He means that he would be pleased and appreciate you doing your best in caring the least on us, thereby demonstrating your love for him. Amen? Yeah. The third point I want to share with you is that we should understand that Jesus' ministry is the ministry of the suffering. When you carry on Jesus' ministry, you should understand it involves suffering and persecution. Carrying on Jesus' ministry always involves the risk of persecution and suffering. Feeding the soul with the eternal truth of God and His Son, Jesus has been inviting hatred from the world through, throughout history. It is because the truth has been cutting against the way the world is built and operating. And the Jesus' ministry of feeding and caring is, as a matter of fact, to make the upside-down life in this upside-down world right-side up, so that man can see God right and come to a right relationship with Him. Amen. But the world in darkness will continue to hate Jesus, Jesus the revelation of God, until His kingdom is culminated. Until then, the church carrying on Jesus' ministry shall remain subject to persecution and suffering. Just as Peter was warned in verses 19 and 20. Very truly, I will tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and when where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. In order for us, what is implied is that in order for us to 
to glorify God, we should assume this suffering. Amen. That's what Jesus, the kind of that by which Peter would glorify God. Amen. Do you love Jesus? In other words, do you want to glorify Jesus? Do you want to glorify God by loving the Lord, His Son, Jesus Christ? Then we have to, we have to assume the suffering by which we all glorify persecution and get a final him. Do we really love Jesus? If our responses are we love you Lord, you know that, then we should have evidence in carrying out the ministry of feeding, caring and suffering. In time of this darkness, this message is more true, more true of us. Right? So I want to bless you that you as a peer, as future peers, for holding the foundation of truth that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God and the Son of the Living God and the Messiah. Just have to call your call to glorify the Lord. And let's carry on this ministry. Amen. 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 Let's bow our hands. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your blessings and so wonderful privilege that we all become. You are saying to your righteous people who are so privileged, privileged to carry on your ministry. And Father, empower us so with the power of the Holy Spirit and presence of the Holy Spirit so that we can continue our Lord's ministry, the ministry of feeding, caring, perseverance. Father, we thank you for this high calling to the wonderful, wonderful ministry. Thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> That's the